It's fun. It's funky. It's ultra light. It's the light AF Eco Pack 40 liter curve backpack. But frankly, we test a lot of ultra light gear here at Terra Drift. So what makes this pack so special? It looks dope. Obviously. <gasps> JK. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it does look dope, but there's more to it than that, I promise. Starting with the fact that this ultralight pack has a full suspension tucked away in that tiny package. Yeah, it's a simple frame, but two skinny aluminum bars, which are removable if you want to trim about five ounces, by the way, keep the back of the pack more rigid and supportive to aid in packing and assist with slightly heavier loads. Slightly heavier. I mean... <laughs> Let's not get carried away here. This is still an ultralight pack. But yes, it can comfortably carry up to 35 pounds, which, let's be honest, is more than I'm almost ever going to carry. But there's more to this pretty orange pack than that. This is the orange topo color, by the way. It's also super functional, as evidenced by its name. It's 40 liters with an extra 15 thanks to all the pockets, though it also comes in a 46 liter version, and has all the features you'd ever want in a pack. A big stretchy mesh front pocket, roomy water bottle pockets that easily hold two smart water bottles or a big ol' Nalgene and then some, a roll top with snaps, adjustable hip belt and sternum strap, and so much more. How much more, you ask? <laughs> I'll tell you. Because in addition to being able to buy this pack off the rack right on the website, you can fully customize your own for the perfect fit and set of features. For starters, it comes in multiple sizes, which are based on your torso length. There are two shoulder strap lengths available, and several belt sizes that fit waists that range from about 28 inches to 50 inches, a fairly inclusive spread. There's a whole page on the brand's website and YouTube channel on sizing to help you figure out what size you need. I tested a small pack with a small hip belt, by the way. Then there are all the colors and patterns, like dozens of them. So you're basically guaranteed to find one that you love. And this eco pack material is made of 100% recycled materials and it's waterproof, plus it's recyclable. Though that's currently a tricky thing because you can't just toss it in your curbside recycle bin. Uh, recycling fabric isn't widely available as a service yet, but hopefully by the time you're ready to retire this bag, it'll be a lot easier because frankly, that's going to be a long time from now. Other customizations and add-ons include stretchy shoulder strap pockets, uh, upper side pockets in addition to the water bottle pockets, a bottom pocket, all of which are on this pack, by the way. There are pull and ice axe loops available, even a single top strap or side pull-down straps, depending on how you like to close your bag. Basically, you can build the exact pack you want, which is awesome, because not only does that mean you're getting the exact pack that suits you, but you're more likely to want to use it for years and years to come, which gives gear out of landfill. So I took this one on a backpacking trip on the PCT in Southern California recently to see how it performed. <laughs> Spoilers. I liked it. Now, I was initially worried that there were no load lifters, which I generally like, but I didn't reach for them once over multiple days of hiking. I was packing ultra light after all, but mostly I was okay with no lifters because the pack just fit so well. I mean, I did order one based on my specific body, so yeah. I was also a little worried the pack was going to be too tall and would hit the back of my head while hiking, and now that might have been the case if I would have had on like a wide-brimmed hat, but because I just donned a ball cap and a sun hoodie, I had no issue whatsoever. Plus, the whole pack just fits well. There's plenty of room in the belt to tighten or loosen the straps, and the hip belt was pretty comfy. Though I do think I'd like a couple hip belt pockets. You can buy those separately, I just didn't. I even liked the water bottle pockets, which was a bit surprising since they're not stretchy like on most packs, and I was worried things might fall out. But I actually liked these better. Not only was it way easier to slide bottles in and out when I was thirsty, because the pockets are huge, and the material is the same durable stuff as the body, which means it's not going to snag on branches and bushes when you're bushwhacking the AT. <laughs> Plus, there are bungees to kind of cinch down the openings a bit, just in case. I also dug the upper side pockets because, frankly, I love a top pocket in a backpack. That's where I want to put my first aid kit, bathroom kit, the extra snacks, etc. 
Since this pack doesn't have that, I liked these low profile stretchy pockets for holding basically the same stuff. It made gear just as easily accessible as it would be in like a lid pocket. <laughs> but maybe my favorite pocket and one that I now want on every single pack ever is the bottom pocket. It's just the perfect place to stash layers that you shed. Uh, the hat, bandana, or net gator, stuff you want to have quick and easy access to without taking off your whole pack. I used it often on a long day of hiking when temps were fluctuating wildly, but I was moving fast and didn't want to stop to dig into other pockets or the inside of my bag. There's also a tiny little opening on the closed end of the pocket that's designed to be a good place to stash trash, like from the cliff bar or scratch shoes you just pounded on the move, which is pretty rad and can keep little scraps of garbage from flying out of pockets. But if you're also stuffing a jacket or bandana in there, there is a good chance you'll yank out any trash when you remove it. So use with discretion. As for packing the whole thing up, I had no trouble jamming it full of all of my stuff for a few days when temps were gonna get down into the mid thirties. I had my enlightened equipment quilt, Thermarest sleeping pad, and our cook set with stove and fuel, all my food, everything. And my base weight was still only about 11 or 12 pounds, probably close to 20 with food and a couple liters of water. And thanks to the minimal frame and comfy straps, including the two-way adjustable sternum strap, <laughs> which I love because you can position it wherever you want on your chest, it was pleasantly comfortable and still nice and light, just how I like it. And also more structured than a frameless UL pack. I wasn't as taken with the shoulder strap pockets. I think I personally would prefer hip belt pockets. They weren't quite spacious enough to easily accommodate a slim water bottle and a protein bar didn't nestle in there supremely well either. I did keep hand sanitizer and lip balm in one, but I really had to dig down in there to retrieve them because they get sort of narrow at the bottom and hard to get into. So it wasn't the best case scenario. But they do fit smart water bottles. You might just have to wrestle with it a bit at first. But overall, I really dig this pack. It fit well, was comfortable, looks rad in photos, frankly. And I'm seriously stoked about how customizable it is. Plus, I love supporting small cottage brands making great high quality gear especially when they're using more sustainable and super durable materials. Do those materials make it the lightest ultralight pack on the market? Well, no. It's 32 ounces with the frame and about 27 ounces without it. But it is super versatile and makes for a great ultralight pack that seriously reduces pack weight without giving up a lot of very useful features and impressive usability, including with heavier loads than would be comfy in a frameless pack, which makes it a pretty good starter ultralight pack that maybe will be your forever ultralight pack. Honestly, the whole thing is kind of a Goldilocks situation. You know, without the breaking and entering, theft and defiling of sleeping arrangements. Goldilocks was kind of a jerk. <laughs> but let's talk about price. This specific configuration is $453. So no, no, it's not a cheap pack. But frankly, this thing is solidly built and supremely durable. The eco pack material is never going to snag. And if you do manage to tear it, it's going to be supremely easy to patch, meaning this pack is going to be with you for a really long time. The most basic version of the pack starts at 315, by the way, quite a bit less expensive. Either way, it's a through hiker favorite and the Trek Best Gear Award winner. <laughs> And it gets two thumbs up from me, so that's something, I guess. We'll drop a link to the Light AF EcoPack 40 liter curve below. And if you're into UL gear, well then check out some of these other rad gear reviews, cause we are too. Then go ahead and ring that bell, hit subscribe, and what the heck, join our Patreon while you're at it. There are, you know, like outtakes and silly videos and all kinds of stuff just for supporters. And if you don't want to miss any of our gear highlights or outdoor adventures, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at TerraDrift and find even more gear guides at TerraDrift.com. Then grab yourself an ultralight pack, wander on farther, faster, less knee pain, because ultralight, you're welcome.